Hannah here with Delta. Today we're going to talk about installing the trim in your bathroom tub and shower. First, let's talk about what's behind the wall, which is Delta's multi-choice universal rough valve. This rough valve is great because it really opens the door to lots of options and works with a wide range of styles and finishes offered by Delta Faucet. It also allows for different valves with varying types of functionality, all without needing to change the valve inside the wall. Today I'm going to show you how to install a dual function trim which allows you to adjust the temperature and volume separately. If you're taking notes, those model numbers start with T17. Let's get started on installing that trim. to our trim install is to install our cartridge. Now for this install we're using a T17 which is a pressure balance type valve and that is different than a T17T. Okay just a quick reminder to make sure that your water is shut off before we start anything. Now we're going to screw off our bonnet nut here and we will use this later so make sure to keep that. We're going to pop off our test cap here. This is used when uh, doing a water test, a pressure test, just to make sure there's no leaks. So this has already served its purpose. We can discard that. And then last, we're gonna pull out this debris screen. Right in here, it just pulls out. It's just this little black thing. And again, that this has already served its purpose, so we can discard this. Okay, now we're gonna take our adapter here. And it has this nice little handle on it. If this is popped off in your packaging, it's really easy to just put back on. You just simply kind of apply some pressure and it'll pop right back on. So there's no up and down to this. So you're just gonna seat this right in here, lines right up with the holes in here, and just apply some pressure. Could take just a little bit of force just to seat those down in here. Okay, once they're in, you can kind of wiggle the handle off. You can discard that handle now. And then just give it a good push down just to make sure that they're all the way seated. That white plastic should be touching the back of your valve here. Okay, mine looks good. Okay, now we're gonna take our cartridge. All right, so we're gonna pop off this top here. This is called the keeper. And it's, you can just discard it. It just keeps the cartridge together. Okay, now we can see where it says hot side. Now this is important to get the hot side facing the hot side. And for me, that's on the left side. So I'm gonna make sure that that is facing the left side. Okay, now I'm gonna line up these keys here. They look like arrows with the keyways here in my valve. Okay, now I'm just gonna apply some pressure, make sure that seats all the way in. Okay. Perfect. All right, now I'm gonna take my bonnet nut and just screw it back on. Hand tighten that. Okay, now I'm gonna pause here and I'm gonna go up top and install our shower head and our shower arm. All right, now it's time to install our shower head and our shower arm. I have the shower arm here and you'll notice there's a long side and a short side. You can install this either way. I'm gonna install mine with the long side towards the wall. Now I'm gonna put plumber's tape on both ends. You can see I've already done one end. Now when I put plumber's tape on, I wanna make sure that the end of my plumber's tape doesn't start to unravel when I tighten this into the wall. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna flip this towards me, take my plumber's tape, get it started. I'm gonna go around four to six times. All right, so now you can see, here's the end of my plumber's tape. You can see that when I'm tightening this into the wall, that my end of my plumber's tape isn't going to come unravel. It's just gonna get flattened down, which is what I wanna see. Okay, now we're gonna take our flange, and I'm gonna do the finish side towards me, and I'm gonna slide it on to the end of my arm. And I wanna put it far enough down that it doesn't scratch the wall when I'm tightening this, but I don't wanna put it too far because I don't wanna scratch my arm. Okay, that's good. All right, now I'm gonna hand tighten this into my fitting in the wall. Okay, that's good, it's facing down. Okay, now I'm gonna push my flange back so that it's flush up against the wall. Okay, 
that looks good. All right, now I'm gonna take my shower head. I wanna make sure that my screen and gasket are still in here. Now they come included in the box just like this right in here. I just wanna make sure that they haven't fallen out. Okay, those are in there, so that's good. Now I'm gonna hand tighten this on. Okay, now this shower head has a ball joint that it moves freely on, so it may be a little tricky to get it super tight. So there's a nut here on the top of the shower head, and you can use your hand to get it just a little bit tighter. Now if you have a leak, you can use a wrench. I would just make sure that you use a towel as a buffer between the nut and the wrench so you're not scratching anything. Okay, that's nice and tight. Now if you have any excess plumber's tape sticking out, you can cut that off with a knife. Okay, that looks good. Ready to move on to installing our tub spout. All right, now it's time to install our tub spout. Now everything you need will be in this bag and you wanna be careful when you're opening it that you don't rip it too much because the instructions are on the bag. So you don't wanna throw it away or rip it that you can't read it. Okay, so in your packaging there will be a tub spout adapter. Now there's a couple different kinds of these and it just depends on how they attach. There's a sweat on where you could solder it on. There's a slip on where you could tighten it down with a set screw. And then there's a thread on that threads onto a half inch pipe thread. So I'm gonna use the slip on. So I'm gonna slip this on with my set screw towards the back. And you're gonna look at your packaging to know the distance you need between the back of your shower wall and the back of your adapter here. I want about an inch. Okay, that looks good. Now I have an eighth inch hex key. And I'm just gonna tighten this enough that it's snug, but I don't want to puncture through that copper pipe. If you are soldering this, make sure that you take off this little O-ring before you solder. Okay, so mine is nice and snug. Now I'm gonna take our tub spout here, and I'm gonna put a bead of silicone on the top and on the two sides. I'm not gonna get it down here near this weep hole because if any condensation or any water gets back here, I want a place for it to drain. Okay, so I'm gonna take our silicone and just put a bead on the three sides. Okay. Now I'm going to screw this on to our adapter. Okay, I don't want to over tighten this. I just want to make so there's no gap at the back. Okay, so I wanna finish turning when it's facing down and then make sure there's no gap. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm gonna take a damp paper towel and just wipe up any excess silicone. Okay, got all of our silicone. That concludes our tub spout install. Now I'm gonna go back up and finish our trim install. First up is to grab this O-ring here. We're gonna slide it on over our cartridge and over our bonnet nut. And it's just gonna sit right behind the bonnet nut. We don't want it to slide back any further. Okay, that looks good. Now we'll take our sleeve and just press it right on over. And apply a little bit of pressure just to make sure it's seated all the way back. Okay. Now we're gonna take our escutcheon and you'll see there's a gasket on the back of this escutcheon. I wanna apply a thin bead of silicone right around this and I'm gonna stop where there's this break in the escutcheon. I wanna make sure that if there's any water that gets back here or condensation that it has a place to drain. So I'm gonna take my silicone, just apply a thin bead all the way around my gasket. Now I'm gonna take my two screws that were included in your packaging, spin this around to the front. I'm gonna put the screws in each one of these holes here. And then we're gonna line the screws up with the holes in our bracket here. All right, I got the bottom one. Okay, 
All right, now I'm gonna use a Phillips screwdriver. I'm gonna tighten these down slowly one at a time. Okay, I just want this to be snug. I don't wanna over tighten. Okay, that looks good. All right, now I'm gonna take our trim ring. Now yours may or may not come with a trim ring. Mine does. So I'm just gonna press it down here. Okay, great. Now we're ready to move on to installing our handle and rotational limit stop. Okay, now it's time to install our volume handle and set our rotational limit stop. So this is our volume handle. You wanna line up these grooves here on the handle with the grooves on the cartridge, making sure that the handle is to the right. Now we're gonna take our rotational limit stop, it's this black piece here, and there is a right side out, you wanna make sure that this H and this C, you can read it. And now we're gonna line this up with the grooves on our handle here, making sure that this metal stop here is in between the H and the C on our rotational limit stop. And I'm gonna put my metal stop right in the middle of the H and C and see where we're at. Okay, so that should sit right in there nice and flush. Now we're gonna take our temperature knob here, and this also has a right side out. We wanna make sure these feet are facing out. And we wanna make sure that this little tab on it is on the left side of my handle. And we'll line it up. There's a little hole here, and it lines up perfectly with this stem on our cartridge. It only goes in one way, making sure that the tab is on the left side. Okay, now we're gonna take this screw that's included in your packaging. And just hand tighten this in here. Take our Phillips screwdriver, tighten it the rest of the way. Okay, now I'm gonna pause here, jump out of the bathtub so I can turn the water on and check our water temperature to see if we need to adjust our rotational limit stop. Okay, now it's time to test our water temperature. Industry standard says that 120 degrees is the maximum, but your local code may vary. 90 to 110 degrees is comfortable. All right, so I'm gonna start by turning our water on. And then I'm gonna turn our temperature knob all the way to cold. To do that, I'm just spinning this white knob here. I'm gonna let it run just for a couple seconds. And then I'm gonna turn it all the way to hot. Now I'm gonna let that get as hot as it can get. And I have a thermometer here. Now I'm gonna let this water run over the thermometer and check to see what temperature we're at. All right, so that was already at 115 and still climbing, which is too hot. I'm gonna jump back in the tub and adjust my rotational limit stop. Okay, I got my Phillips screwdriver again. I'm gonna unscrew this screw from my temperature knob. Now when this screw comes out, I wanna make sure that I keep my finger down on this temperature knob so that my rotational limit stop doesn't pop off. I wanna know exactly what spot I had it at. Don't wanna lose that screw. Okay, now I'm gonna pull off our temperature knob, keep my finger on our rotational limit stop. Okay. All right, so since I wanna make this colder, I'm gonna move this clockwise so that the C gets closer to our metal stop here. And I'm just gonna move this two, two grooves over. So I'm just gonna pull it out. Very carefully. Move that two over. I'm gonna set it back in. Now I'll just install my temperature knob again. Slide that over the stem. And put my screw back in. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna jump out and test the water. All right, so we're gonna test this again. We're gonna turn the water all the way on. And when I do this, I wanna make sure that my temperature knob hasn't turned cold. I wanna make sure it's all the way hot. Okay, now I'm gonna let this run to get it as hot as it can get. And then I'll take my thermometer, see where we're at.
Okay, mine was holding steady right at 106, 107, which is exactly where I want it, right between 90 and 110. You do wanna make sure that you do get a steady temperature so you don't get a false reading. Make sure not to pull it out too early when the temperature is still climbing. If you need to adjust yours a little bit more, just do the same steps, adjust little by little until you get the right temperature. Okay, the last thing that we need to do is install our temperature cap. So this goes on one way. Okay, so mine just snaps on. Yours may attach a little bit differently, just like that. Okay, that concludes our installation of models starting with T17 dual function valves. All right, that wraps up our install. I hope it went smoothly for you. If you have any questions or need any help, reach out to Delta's customer service. They have a knowledgeable support staff ready to help.